It's episode 38 of Breaking Into, and it's the Lots of Los Angeles edition, next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. Oh, you guys know this song. MJ, may he rest in peace. I think it's been five years at this point. Long or seven years. How long has it been? It's been a while. Eight uh, Seven years? Oh, eight? Oh, nine. Nine? Oh, nine. Oh, nine. I, just, I, yeah. still, can't, I still can't get over that. I still yeah. can't get over that. Welcome to this edition of Breaking Into. I am your host, James Law Jr., of course, and I'm so glad to be back. I have a great guest today that I'm going to introduce you to. You know my, my motto is paying it forward, share knowledge, and lift each other up, and this guy does this. So I'm glad to have him on my show. This man puts me to shame. You guys out there know I work. You know I work, and I'm diversified, and I work in everything and all things. Um, this guy is a writer, director, producer, editor. He's done TV films, short films, long films, commercials, visual effects, internet wedding videos. I found some online. I was like, oh, you do those too? He, does, he works. He's out here in L.A., and he is working it out. He's done some sports stuff when he was in San Antonio. I mean, this, is, this guy is incredible. And he's one of my relatives. We get to talk to him today. Andre Dante. How's it going, man? Hi, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I, I'm truly thankful for you having me on here. Thank you. And also to Michael Jackson, that's for my mom. I know she'll appreciate that. <laughs> Michael was a hard worker too, so that's that's that goes to our theme. Yeah. He was a yeah. hard worker. He was yeah. he was an all around entertainer yeah. who really cared about the craft of his pop music and making it good. Yeah. That's why he put out he didn't put albums out every year. Like he he worked, he made sure they were good and yeah. then he put them out. And this was a good album that he did, he did, so it's good. So you guys, so um, you've done so much yeah. that we're going to just kind of, we can't be here for five hours. I, mean, I wish we could, but we just can't do that. So they, they won't let me, they'll, they'll kick me out at some point. Um, but we're going to talk about, so we're going to touch on some of the stuff that you've done, yeah. of course. Now, first of all, I, I mentioned the Lots in Los Angeles thing because I was looking for other Lots in the world anyway, and we have a connection. Yeah. Uh, we have some people that we know in common, first of all, and we'll talk about that in a second too. Yes. But... You, you don't use that as your last name, but it is your last name. But you yeah. know, you, you dropped it for your last name. I use it for mine. But I have relatives who don't use it for last name either. But in fact, we come from the same last name and possibly the same family lineage. Yeah. Same yeah. much town. Yeah. You know, in Texas, like I say, my lot side of the family is from Kerrville, Texas, down to the south, and a little small town. Like, uh, the whole reason why I ended up not using the lot last name, though, is because when I first got to LA, and like I'll be like submitting for like projects and stuff. I was going by Dreddy Lot, which Dreddy is my nickname. Oh. I was going by Dreddy Lot, but like say like if I sent out like thirty like resumes to people, yeah. I only get like two or three people to contact me back. But then I ended up dropping. I sent out and Dreddy Dante. I was like, oh, let me just try a different name. And I went with that Dreddy Dante, which was my first and middle name. Yeah. And I ended up starting getting saved. I sent out thirty. I was getting like ten people message me back. But what made me really stick with it is I went to one uh, meeting. I got hired to be a director of photography and stuff. Yeah. And I got hired for this one job. And uh, I went to the meeting. And like when I walk in, they was like looking at me like, who's this big black dude walking in here? And I was like, oh, I'm here for the meeting. Uh, the director of photographer, I'm hired for the for the job, for this film. And they was like, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, so then like after I ended up doing the project and stuff, and like the guy loved my work and stuff, and he ended up pulling me to the side and saying, he was like, Andretti, I can't lie to you. He was like, when you first sent me your resume and all that stuff, he was like, when I saw the name, I thought some like Jersey Shore Italian dude was yes, gonna come in yes, here. Yes. He was like, you know, nothing against your work and what you yeah, do. He was yeah. like, but I really thought it was gonna be a white guy that walked yeah. in here. So then ever since then, ever since I started using my my real first name and my middle name, the gigs has been like, it started going through the roof for me. And I was like, Okay, they can really put. You know, I was like, I knew, I knew where to go with. Yeah, with, with the, sorry, lots, anyway. but yeah. you know, I'm like some money. Yeah, it's yeah. not a stable business. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because I've had guests on my show. We talk about names. Yeah, um, I've had director Inzinga Stewart in here. Yeah, and she did some movies on some regular non-black cable stations. Yeah, and she had problems with her name. Yeah. And it was like in Zingo, like to me, I'm like a person that you can direct, you can direct. But hearing that ethnic kind of name, yeah. No, a lot. I get, I get people think I'm white all the time. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's like the big thing. Like, I really didn't realize how like much it was like of uh, like on the East Coast and stuff. It was more like considered a white name until yes. I went to school in Florida. Yeah. And like all the lots out there was all white, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, you know, looking at me like, yeah, well, where does the black lots come yes, from? Exactly. You know, and it's yeah. like. 
where I'm from, that's all with the Latour is black and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, and two, the big thing where I switched it up too is because when I first got here, I was mainly just doing like hip hop music videos. Like my first film was Streets Keep Calling Me. And like people's kind of type- typecasting me as like just an urban hood director. Uh... And like people that really know me know like my big background is like I'm obsessed with like 80s like film stuff. And that's the reason why I ended up kind of like being like, I got to start doing some different stuff to show that. I'm just not an urban director. I can yeah. direct anything. I can touch all bases and everything. Yeah. And like many years later now, you can look at my resume and see. Oh, it's very, got, oh yeah. Yeah, it's all diverse. It's very <laughs> it's diverse. Like, no, it's very diverse. And that's a that's a good point because um, a lot of times with our name, our skin color, yeah. they want, and this is Black Hollywood Live, so we can talk about it um, <laughs> freely, Yeah. Um, that, that a lot of times you are pigeonholed. They look at you and go, okay, and it's kind of weird to me. It's like they think you can only do black stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or that your only your interest is in black stuff. Yeah. Um, I love horror films. And yeah. I can talk about horror films the insides and outsides of them to death. Yeah. To me, that has no color. I grew up yeah. watching them. We all did, and yeah. just, you like them. That's not the only thing I can do. So I think it's really interesting you say that, where they, they have to see your name or, or see what you did in the beginning and go, well, that's all they can do. Yeah. You, know, you did it well, so that's great. Yeah. But you're like, I have other interests. Yeah. Other stuff, and give us a chance and to do that. And, and yo, we're going to talk about some of your work, because you have diversified since then. One of the things that, you, that we have in common is Jalen Jones. Oh, yeah, Jayla, yeah, little Jayla. Yeah, I was his yeah. first ever TV interview. I didn't yeah. know that till little 50, probably 16 now. I yeah. love Manzi and all the Joneses. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, Manzi's my... I just talked to Manzi actually last week. Uh, oh, we're right. getting ready to do the uh, DeAndre Bonds documentary to wrap it up. Oh, We've good. been shooting it for like two and a half years now. Oh, good. And kind of just show all the, diver- all the stuff he's been going through. And like, uh, it's going to be kind of just a touch in the basis of like, you know, him going to jail and like yeah. his drinking problems and just his battles in Hollywood and stuff like that yeah. and trying to get back to that top. Wow. Yeah. Manzi's a great guy, great oh, father. Oh, Manzi's the man. Manzi's the man. Yeah, great father. Yeah. Hi, Manzi. You know, I, you know, yeah. I love you guys. Yeah, Manzi's I'm Uncle man. James. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I love you guys. <laughs> um, and you've got a Super Andretti by Leonardo. I can't pronounce your last uh, name. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Leo. Yeah. That's my boy. That's uh, he in Italy. That's my boy. He's in Italy. He's telling last name. Yeah. And Andretti done it all. Someone says. <laughs> yes, he done it all. Um, but yeah, so Jalen was somebody he did. He had DVD for and then you, and what did you do on the DVD exactly? I did all the uh, visual effects for. Effects. Yeah. yeah, digital DVD. Yeah. Um, so we had, and then also we know okay back Hollywood Live folks. You know, we have our sister network After Buzz TV. Many of you know I did two shows over there called The Impastor TV After Show and Lachey's Bar After Show with my two drunk girls. That's their, that's their name. That's what they go by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Le- Lauren Leonelli and Jennifer Golden. And you know them too. Yeah, They're yeah, They're like, yeah. we know him. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Jennifer Golden and what's their data? Data homies. Uh, yeah. I met them through Manzi uh, working on the Art of Life show. Uh, one episode I went out. We went out and stuff. And uh, Jennifer was there. And I just kind of was like, you know, just doing the film stuff so much and being around people. And, like, uh, when she was just, her whole charisma and everything, I could just tell, like, the way when we'll be doing the interviews, the way she would just kind of, like, automatically take something that the person would say yes. and just automatically come with a question. And, like, you could tell, like, she had that experience. So then when I kind of asked Manzi, he was like, hey, where is she from? Where would you find her? And stuff like that. He was like, oh, she does stuff for all different types of interview stuff. stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could tell. And, like, she just had that thing about her that it was like you know that's why we love seeing her just keep going further yes. and further with it i'm like oh whenever she posts like oh, i just got the new hosting job for this i'm like yeah they know what they're doing i was like whoever casted her they know what they're doing yeah she's a good they're, they're yeah. both are good ones and jennifer is funny because she was the lead of our show and she had i think she's also a comedy background yeah. and, stuff. and so she really yeah we played off each other very well yeah and so and i love my girls and so that's we have that in common too this is yeah. again small world that we're yeah. all in. And this business is small, isn't it? Yeah, oh, this business is super small. Like, I mean, like, uh, that was the one thing that I will say I tell a lot of people is, like, don't burn bridges with certain people. And some people you kind of just know, like, you really don't burn a bridge with them. It's kind of just of, uh, you just don't work well together. But uh, the one thing I always tell people is, like, don't burn bridges. Like, sometimes just, you know, shake the hands clean and walk. Yes. Like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, because some people you may not just be creatively matched to yes. work together and it's just like uh thing one big thing with me too is like uh if you really go through and look at a lot of my stuff like my own personal stuff i usually work with a lot of the same people over and over i kind of like the adam sandler thing where he kind of works with the same people over and over mm-hmm. because too in this industry we all are artists and creatives so we all got crazy personalities oh, and yes. stuff well, like that yes. Yes. so it's always cool when you find those ones that you mess with and it's like that helps take down the stress of putting together a project like people don't understand that like 
Oh, yeah. The the trouble it is to put together a project. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's like the less headaches you can have, the better. And then, too, especially when you got people you're used to working with, you already know what they're going to bring to the table. Yes. And it makes it much easier to just, like, uh, go in and say, okay, I got this person. I know it's going to do this. I know this person can do that. And bam, cause when you start bringing in new people, it's going to be like, ah, uh, you don't yeah. know, know too much. And, like, uh, it's always cool to find those good ones that you connect with and keep that bond with. And that's one of the big things I take a lot of pride in, too, is, like, having recurring clients with, with stuff and having people that love to work with me, people that constantly hit me up like, hey, Andretti, let's work on this, let's work yeah. on that. Like, I love having people that, like, over eight, nine years now, they'll still be mm-hmm. Andretti, Andretti, Andretti. It'd be people I ain't talked to in, like, a year or two that is yeah. randomly, Andretti, I got this project I'm working on. Hey, That's good. can you work on it? I'll be like, I take that as pride. And, like, some people I know, they be like, you have returning, you have a recurring clients? And I'm like, yeah, like, but then when I do something with them, I'll see why they don't because it's like, kind of a headache to work with man yeah. <laughs> it's yes. like uh like, like like my thing one thing my grandma would always say all money ain't good money but i said my brother said the same thing <laughs> i say it all the time on the show my and, uh, the same thing and there's some people that i'd be yes. like the money ain't worth it no. with you like my sanity is better than the money <laughs> that is you're bringing up a point that a lot of people may not know who are not in the business this business is all about working with people you like and, yes. and a lot of times it's not color yes. a lot of times it's not age or gender it's just that you find people that you like yeah. that you're going to spend 16, 17 hours a day with. Yes. Like you yes. said, you want somebody who's going to be easy to work with and will produce what you need. Yes. Exactly. Because you're on budgets. Yes. You're on, you got time crunches. You got lighting. You're going to lose yes. the light over here. And like you literally have a lot of stuff that you said are components that go into yeah. producing a project. Yeah. Even a three minute project takes Take, a lot. Yes. It takes together. a lot. Yeah. It takes, it's like, I think a lot of people don't realize like what it takes to make something happen. Like, I mean, it's a lot of work. It's yeah. uh, even like, even now where like things are so low budget now, it's still a lot of mm-hmm. work and time and money. And you dealing with different people's lives and all that type of stuff. Yes. It's a lot you got to take into it. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Martinson's in here and says, uh, "Pony says loyalties. <laughs> heck yeah, yeah, loyalties. That's that's very pony. That, yeah, that's very it's very true. Um, now, one of the things you did coming out of the box because you're from San Antonio. Yeah. That's why you went, you went to San Antonio. Was Fox News San Antonio? Yeah, so yeah. What'd you do there? Uh, I was part of the floor crew. We did like all the sports stuff. Like uh, we had like Max Sports was like uh, at the time. Like that was one of the things I learned when I started working there. Was uh, you know." these different like major stations was Fox News uh, they had ended up getting the Spurs contract so we were showing the Spurs okay. games back home so you know we would shoot like the Saturday morning uh, I forgot the name it was like the Coyote Kids or something like that we would shoot all their little different Saturday morning little specials that just yeah. aired in San Antonio and South Texas okay. and like uh, that was one of the big things and then uh, just did all the floor crew stuff edited all the commercials like different things like that with Fox That's News cool. but like I love it there, and it's st- I still connected with a lot of people from there. Like we still talk on Facebook yeah, and yeah. text and stuff all the time. But uh, it was one of those things that like, it's nothing against news. I got nothing against it, but I'm more of like I wanted to be able to just yeah. create different stuff. And like with news, it's more of like regimented. It's yeah, like you got certain, it's yeah. slapstick. It's the same thing every day. It's yeah. just a different story added to it. And then one thing too that kind of was kind of a troubling for me was that uh, you know, like when you'll go do a news report and it's like a person you grew up with is the one that got killed. Oh, so that was wow. making it like, that was making it like kind of hard sometimes when like you go and it's like, you sitting there editing and you seeing people you oh know God. crying and all that stuff on camera and it's like, yeah. I know these people personally. Yeah, like yeah. it's like, I just was with this dude last week and now I gotta sit here and edit his mom crying. Oh like, my God, that would be crazy. Yeah, so then it was just that thing where I was like, this ain't really me and I was like, I'm going to want to do like film and vi- like yeah. different stuff. This wasn't my, it wasn't my thing to do. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. I want to say San Antonio is a great river walk. Yeah. I've done it several times. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, I've spent a few times there. I thought yeah. it was great. Great town. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Um, so now, and then we're going to show the first clip is, well, I guess we'll show that one. Yes, the one we're going to show. Yes, the one we're going to show. Yes. Uh, we're going to show because you did music videos. Yeah. And so I believe um, Fleazy Skywalker is in the chat room. We're yeah. going to show a piece of one of your videos. Well, this is the lyric video. Yes. Wait, since you edited this one? Yeah, yeah, edited and shot it. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, 
Ben Frank is actually like he's like my brother. We've been knowing each other since the sixth grade. Like, oh, wow. He's one of the main reasons why I ended up coming to LA. Oh. He done wrote stuff from everybody from Bobby Brown, Still Million. He was signed with Rodney Jerkins. He oh, done, wow. like I remember him doing stuff with Katy Perry before she even like blew up. Like wow. he been nominated for Grammys, like all types of stuff. Uh it's a great song. Yeah, he's the one singing on it. He wrote it, all that type of stuff. He does a lot of stuff for major people. He's actually in Nashville now. He just signed with DreamWorks. Wow. And stuff. Yeah, he's doing like a lot of composing for this wow. stuff. And then uh and then great also shots. Too, These are great shots. Yeah, then also too, uh, Fleazy on here. I've been knowing him since college for like 17 years now. Wow. And like he's like my brother too. Like uh, he's one of the ones if y'all look up the three headed monster photo shoot yeah. we just did. He's the one with the hat on in those pictures. And well, first stuff. of all, you're like me, you look young, so I can't believe those 17 years <laughs> from college. You look young like I do. What's going on there? I know we age well, but that's kinda that's crazy talk. <laughs> But I just want to support it because you, you edit this video. It's just a great, a great video. It's yeah. Great, it's very nice. It captures the song. It's a great video. Yeah. Um, what is one thing about editing that we should know about who don't edit? you got to have a lot of patience and a um, lot of patience. Like, a lot of people always kind of, like, amazed at the fact that, like, I can edit. Be like, how do you do it? But I say have a lot of patience and just... Um, get lost in that world when you edit in just try to like zone everything out and get lost in that world so you can get caught in it so you can really get the rhythm of like what's going on and what the person's trying to catch and uh uh but see i love editing though i love like taking a clip of like you can take a clip of something like we can have us like you know shooting like this brick wall right here but then cut to a scene in New York and be, the way you place it together it'll make a person think that they right here yeah. in LA doing I just love the like creativity of like making things mesh and like uh, it's just a uh, I just love it I don't know it's kind of hard to explain I mean, you explain it fine you, you like doing it I mean, yeah. you, like, you, like, you actually like the editing process because I'm sure I've been edited a few smaller things myself yeah. it's a lot you need a lot of patience yeah you do you need a lot of patience yeah. to get in there and get lost and you have to watch sometimes footage over and over again yeah that's one thing too like one uh, little thing uh, that's one thing too. Like I kind of tell some people, like that'll be in the room with me or be there with me when I'm doing it. I'll be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm used to it. Like going back, boom, 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 mm. and hearing the same thing over and over and over. And like, I know he can get annoying for somebody that's not used to hearing yeah. shoot, 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 hearing yeah. it go back and forth. Mm. Like, uh, it's a thing. Like I say, you got to have patience and just kind of. It's normal to me, but I don't have other people that have been there and been like, "Oh man." Uh, I think I'm gonna leave out the room right now because they get tired of hearing just this mm -hmm. thing going over and over. They be like, "How can you do it? How can you keep looking at that same clip over and over and keep just doing that different stuff?" I'm like, because you're in the know. zone, you're trying to find yeah. something. There's something you're trying to actually listen for or see. That's your cue, right? To and then too, like with me, like uh, editing now to me is super easy because I started editing way back when I was 14 years old in oh, high wow. school, okay. tape to tape. Wow, back at, that's a, that's back at my cool. old high school at ECTV, yeah. like uh, I would edit tape to tape. We had the three VCR set up. You said tape to tape, and you got to sit oh, hit rewind, oh and you got to have like be just on point with oh hitting play God. to like you know get that right clip. So like to yeah. me, editing now is simple with these computers. It's like oh, this is a breeze for me. That's why it's like he just said VCR kids. He yeah. said he said VHS VCR. VHS VCR. tapes. Yeah, tapes. Yeah. That's crazy. And that was the one like back then too. You know. With VHS tape and stuff, if you want to tape and do it too much, that tape gonna tear. Yes, I know. And then you lose all your footage. Oh, it's like, oh man, like what's going on? I love it. <laughs> and also back there when, when when camcorders had tapes, also yeah, it was yeah. tapes. There was no little cards you put in yeah. and like and edit on online. It was it was all tape. Yeah, I was, love that. I love yeah. it all. Um, let's show the next clip. And this is something that you did. Ah, uh, yeah. To, we'll show this one. Let's pull. Yeah, this is a uh, part of my obsession with Transformers. I can tell what I can tell. <laughs> anyway, nobody know I'm obsessed with Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like a little, diff just a different take on showing like clips and stuff I've done, like all the I know, I films and stuff. I love it. I always just try to go outside the box of like your normal way of doing stuff. I like that. It's, 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 that's why I want to show it. It's like something just, just you know, it's just quick and different. Like yeah. the music was really good. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's, I mean, it's, I mean, like, can you watch your product after you're done with doing it? Can you watch it and be objective, or do you? Or do you I, when I watch, watch it, I kind of cringe at times. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know, and like uh, that's just what like I praise when like say like you saying how you love it and stuff. Like I see things where I messed up at, okay. but like you know the. 
your regular consumer don't see it, yeah. you know, like, and I'm sitting there like, ooh, and like when, that's why I be so appreciative <laughs> when like, <laughs> people would like message me or like stuff like that, like they'll message me on like Facebook or yeah. like Twitter, different stuff like that. And they'd be like, oh, I saw your stuff, I love it. And I'm like, okay, uh, so is this funny. a joke, is this a prank? Like, yeah. you know, and like, uh, I'm always just truly thankful and I always just like realize that like, you know, I see all the little stuff like, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure people with big multi-million dollar movies, they watching and be like, oh man, that scene right there. You know, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure they do that with those. Of well, course, I, I should do it well, with Let me ask you a question. Can you watch anything and and look at it as for what it is and not like, like some musicians can't watch certain, hear certain songs. Like, yeah. that, that guitar is out of tune a little bit. Or can you, when, can you watch things? I have, to tur- I have to turn off the okay. film filter. Yes. I have to turn it off. <laughs> like, like certain <laughs> movies, like uh, say for instance, like uh, yes. the last Transformers film. Yes. I was super excited to go see it. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, I can't wait to see it. I went in there and watched it. I messed up and watched it with the film filter on. Oh. So that was like one of the first movies I ever walked out of that I was like oh. angry. Like Oh wow. I felt okay. like I wasted my money. Like I was wow. mad. But then like months later I ended up watching it on Blu-ray. And then like uh and I just was talking to one of my friends, Eric, about this the other day. Um, I watched it on Blu-ray and I had a whole much better appreciation for it yeah. got turned off the filter and i was like i'm just watching for it what it is yeah. and like i realized all the work it took to do it and like doing all those effects somebody that do effects mm-hmm. and stuff like that i was like this actually was a good movie like yeah it has its flaws but yeah it actually was a lot better but yeah, yeah but like the big thing is with certain movies i just turn off the filter yeah. and i could just watch it now and enjoy it a lot better yeah. and that's one thing i'm trying to get better at is when I go watch movies or watch shows and watch stuff, of turning it off and just watching it. Yeah. Just getting back to that old kid me before I got into the industry and like kind of could see all yes, the flaws right. and see all the stuff. Like uh, I uh, I do with other <laughs> hosts sometimes. I watch a show and I'm like, oh my God, that host annoys me. I'm like, I'm sure I know, people, I know I annoy people too, I'm sure. Yeah. But I, I have to sometimes turn it off and go, just watch this for what it is. Yeah. And it could be like, and a lot of times you're like, it's fun. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. But since you, cause since you do editing and direct photography and directing and yeah. producing, you got to turn all that shit off. Oh, uh, yeah. I got to I gotta turn it off bad. Like, it'll be certain like stuff I can watch, like, uh, say like how you sitting there with your hand like mm-hmm. that. And say it may cut to like a shot where it's showing me, and you'll see your hand like that, then it cut back to you and your hand is back like that. <laughs> the average I won't see it, and I see it, I'm like, I'm like, man. No, like, continuity come yeah, on. Yeah, I'm like, oh, like it'll just be like little simple stuff or like it could be like certain scenes where you could tell like the person wasn't actually right there in the room with them. Yes. And I'm like, ah, I could just tell could have lighten slightly off right there. Like <laughs> and you could just tell like the angle and the way they're trying to cheat the shot. Then they'll get back to other shots and they'll show uh, them together. But you can tell where they just edited in, they had to get that cleanup shot yeah. to fix that scene or whatever. And it's like, ah, but I'm, I'm working on turning it off though when I watch stuff now. We're gonna show um a trailer. This thing actually, I kind of want to. I want to see the the film of it. I mean, the, the trailer is really good because it's like very suspenseful. It's quick. Let's show. It's called One Knock Too Many. Hey, Elijah, did you see this guy over here? This one you actually can see on YouTube already. I dropped it last uh, Halloween. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So creepy. Oh <laughs> like, don't hurt the kids. <laughs> this is a little quick summary I just want to do because I'm going this whole new route with working on doing like short films and stuff like okay. that because of how YouTube and all that stuff is like a major thing now. Like, you know, years back I was born to. Uh, uh, it's like, don't kill the kids. <laughs> That's one that I got a, a lot of messages. People was like, oh my God, like they was going crazy. Yeah, I know. I, I was like, oh my, I was like, uh, okay. Anyway, so you were, say, you were saying? Uh, yeah, uh, that's one of the things like I'm going for this new route, like with the road trip and stuff like that is uh, going straight geared towards the internet. And like, uh, it's just crazy. Like uh, me and my one good friend, Fleezy, we was talking about this a couple of days ago and like uh, my other boy, Wiz, uh, we was all talking about this, uh, how back in like 07, 08, I never get when I shot Street Sheep calling me. And I remember releasing it on MySpace. And I remember oh, other I filmmakers see. was like oh messaging me and stuff and was like, you put a feature film on MySpace? And I'm like, I can't, I don't want to go around trying to shop it off and do all this. I'm like, it really ain't worthy to be on a DVD or nothing. I want to yeah. get it out there for people to see. 
And then when it started taking off and I started getting all these articles on it, like people being on it, and this is like this funny now to like fast forward the tape to like now where it's normal. that's what everybody do now. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh and like that was one of the things like I kinda have problems with with some people where I'll be trying to tell them like, hey man, gear stuff towards the internet, gear it towards the internet because you basically got your own cable station with YouTube. Yes. YouTube, Vimeo, all that stuff. You can yes. you got your own cable station and yeah. you'll build your buzz up, you build all your stuff up, and then that'll make the big dogs come knocking on your door now instead of you having to go knock on it. But too, when I be talking to certain people with that, it makes me feel a little bit old now. I'll be like, I'm the old man in the game now. <laughs> right. Because I remember back in the day when you had to go knocking yeah. on the doors of the big dogs and like sitting there like, oh man, like hopefully they see it, yeah, hopefully they yeah, come yeah. to me. And now it's like, you got your own platform now. I tell all the time, it's a good time to be a filmmaker or uh, a TV person or anything because yeah. as we're doing here at After Buzz TV and Black Hollywood Live Media, yeah. We you could put stuff online, yeah, for free, yeah, and but like to get an iPhone, get an iPhone, you can make yeah. a movie. Tangerine was movies made on iPhone and got all these indie spirit awards. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's it's getting to the point where you were thinking outside the box, yeah, back then. And I remember MySpace. And I remember you remember years later you tried to do music on MySpace. And that was the next thing too. But it was yeah, music. so it's like you were ahead of the curve, just thinking that, and you were just thinking, I want to get it out. Yeah, I want people to see this. Yeah, and get it out. And I'm tired of going door to door. Yeah, to the big people, trying to get them to see this. Yeah, yeah, that was my thing. I just was like, I just like my thing with like projects I do and stuff is just about people seeing it. Like I don't want to do something that's have it sitting in the can. No, of and, course like, not. Like oh, I gotta wait to make this hundred million dollars off this. Was, I'm gonna yes. keep it. I'm like no. I'm like put it out there, and it would it would float on its own and do what it's going to do. And uh, I'm more about just. You know, having somebody just enjoy what I do. Like, and then I say, like, if they enjoy it or they hate it, I'm like, as long as they took time out of their life to just watch something I did, I'm appreciative of it. I agree. Like, I, I'm, I'm thankful. Food by Pictures, oh, thank you for what it says. I love seeing two brothers who love film. So much passion coming through. Thank Manzi. you. Manzi. <laughs> that's love. Is that yeah. Manzi? If you that's watch Manzi. That's Manzi. <laughs> Manzi Jones. I didn't know that was you, my buddy. Um, Christine Morrow says, hey, Andretti Dante, I attend... Full Sail University. I finished the bachelor's program, and now I'm doing my the master's. Oh, nice! Congratulations! Congratulations, Christine! Congratulations! Oh, Good no. luck to you. Positive vibes to your way. Yeah, no, I mean that's great. And that's, yeah. Well, okay, so let's talk about this for a second. This is again Black Hollywood Live, and I'm really curious because we are two black men talking yeah. about film, yeah. which you don't see that often. First of all, which is great. Which is great. I mean, it should be more often. Yeah, than it happens. And right now, it's kind of in to be black. Right now, yeah. a lot of projects are being looked at because now yeah. African Americans are in. Thank you, Shonda Rhimes, <laughs> Tyler Perry on some level. Yeah. Um, how has it been for you? You talked earlier about the the uh, name thing. Now you've been in the business. Well, how has it been for you as a black man navigating this business as a producer and director and editor and all that? Back in like oh seven oh eight, I say like from oh seven to like two thousand ten, it was like like I say I would get kind of this already thrown in that thing of like you just a black director or no, I could feel the I could feel what my skin color I could feel it like I feel like I was just a black guy doing film you know all you could do is hip-hop videos and urban stuff that's all you can do is that's all you can do you can't do nothing else and like it was times where like a person would meet me in person and they automatically be turned off like it'll be a Caucasian person or something they would like say we'd be going back and forth through emails and that was one thing too why back in the day too for a while there i wouldn't have like my pictures or nothing on nothing yeah. i would have like optimus prime or like different <laughs> stuff so they couldn't put no nothing on me they just had to look at the anything. work yeah so they'll be emailed back and forth with me texting and stuff talking about how great all my stuff mm -hmm. is then i go sit and meet with them and they kind of were like you can tell like when i'll come up and talk to them, they kind of be like oh man this is a black guy he gonna be you know they automatically associate you with gangs and all that other type oh, yeah. of stuff especially when they see like you know the stuff that i was doing which isn't me like if anybody knows me no that's not me yeah, yeah. and so uh you know uh i have to say once i did my horror short uh the urban legends one the kidney jacket with the girl in the tub and that type of stuff and that really that I, reason why i did it too is because i wanted to show like i can do everything like mm -hmm. like hey i'm willing to try everything i'm not saying i'm the greatest but i guarantee i can get it done yeah and uh, when I did that, and that took off, like, I was surprised at how much it, like, all the major horror sites, everything was on it. So then that's when I came with Book of a Thousand Deaths, and that's what really kind of changed. It took me from just doing urban stuff to being able to do everything. Like, they was like, okay, he can actually 
direct, you know, Caucasian actors, Hispanic actors, all these different races, he has can do it, you know, like, uh, that's why I cheer on people like F. Gary Gray, who's like, yes. you know, start off doing the urban films, and now he's doing Fast and Furious 8, and like, mm-hmm. you know, he's showing like his diversity, and I love seeing like, I love seeing African American black filmmakers cross that, yes. cross that genre, like, it's like, you know, just look at me for my work. Don't look at me for the color it's of my skin. It's funny you just said that. I mentioned him. I did a. I just did an earlier show today for our sister network, um, After Buzz TV. I interviewed Griff first. He's a producer, director, and actor himself. He's white. But yeah. we were talking about that, and he, he did Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Antoine Fuqua. Yeah. So he told it. He goes, I said, tell me one thing about Antoine that you were surprised by. He goes, I didn't know he did the Gangster's Paradise video. <laughs> like, 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 I love that song. We started laughing. We started talking about how... Yeah. He goes, he goes, yeah, that's back then when MTV showed videos. Yeah. You know, and like him and I said, him, F. Gary Gray, all, all of them back then were yeah. doing these. Even his white directors like Spike Jones, they all yeah. do videos. They're all yeah. doing videos at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they find, now they're doing made feature films and getting Oscar nominations. Yeah. And, and big films. You got, I mean, Antoine worked with Denzel. I mean, he's like in this big film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I love, I love seeing that, trans, that I, I love seeing that transition. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the things like, uh, uh, I constantly just strive for it, just to constantly just keep growing as an artist and just keep getting better and better. And like, uh, that's one thing too. I tell a lot of people that first come out here, like say like I do a casting, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll get people that are coming. To, you can tell people that been here for a while. Yes. They'll come into the cast and they kind of just come right in. Boom, 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 boom. You get those new people that are here. They come in so bubbly and happy and like, you know, blah blah. blah. And that's when I kind of sit there. And what well, funny thing too is I used to work for this one casting lady, and. Uh, she was like the most fun loving like happy go lucky person but we go into the casting she'd just be like a stone wall just like and as she told us she said she does that to see if they can handle the pressure of somebody just oh yeah being a rock to them so like people would like kind of trip out when they'd be in a casting with me and i do that but i had like say like a new person come they'd be saw but like oh yeah blah, blah blah then i asked like how long you been here and they'd be like oh i've been here for a month and i'm like okay talk to me in six months yeah exactly like talk to me in six months and Let's see if you're on that same, yes. that same enthusiasm, same like, because people come here thinking that, you know, and I'm not knocking nobody's dream. I'm just yeah. saying, I'm just giving you a realistic outlook on it. Like, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. You got to build it. You got to, you're going to get bumps and bruises. And like, I feel like everybody got to take that time. They're going to get bent over and take it real good. Like, this is how that business does you, but it's a matter of how you bounce back and keep fighting through it. And uh, that's true. That's that's so true because people, this is un- unstable. Yeah. Schizophrenic. <laughs> rough. I'm trying to use yeah. words that are cuss words. Yeah. Uh, business that yes. we're that we have chosen to be in. Yeah. We've chosen to be yeah. in it. Um, it, it. It could be unforgiving. Yes. And if you're a person of color, oh. Just add that in there. And even though, even though I will say this, Hollywood likes green. That's the color. Yeah. I mean, that's number one. The number one color in Hollywood is green. Yeah. So if if they feel we could do something for them, yeah. they will use us yes. to make money. But 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 it is but it's also hard for people of color, and that's all colors, um, people of color in this business to actually make their way. Because I notice this for me a lot of times. There's always that one slot they give for us. Yeah. And then many of us will fight over each other to get to that one spot. Yeah. But you're like me. We're kind of like. Why is only let's, let's make ten spots? Yes, exactly. I'm like, why are we stepping on each other? Yeah, to make it to that one spot that they're telling us is right there. Yeah, I'm like, build your own path. Like, hey, that wall's there. Let's knock it down. Let's keep going. Like, we can, we don't have to go through that one little hole right there. No. Let's knock this whole wall down. Like, right. let's go together and knock it down. Yes, that's what I'm on. I'm like on that thing of like, I'm just on that thing of like just building that strong team, and you all on that same goal and that same point, and you would get to that mountaintop. Because I done seen it happen before, and I done been a part of it before. And it's just, uh, two is just that thing, too, when you get with certain people, when you get to that mountaintop, they tend to change. And this industry would do that to people, where they'll start being like, they kind of had their nose in there to you, but they don't realize, like, hey, I was with you climbing that mountain. Like, I helped you get up there. Mm-hmm. I remember reaching down for you, helping you pull up, and mm-hmm. we get in there. Like, that's one of the things with this industry that, like I say, it's so much... It's so much that goes into yeah, this industry. It <laughs> it's just, it's a... I, I, my thing is, I just want to tell people that, you know, it, yeah, it is hard for people of color, but just saying that it's it's much more than that, period. Yes. It's, 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 there's a bigger issue. And it's, yes. it's been an issue this year, of course, with the Oscars, so why yeah. and all that stuff. But I just feel like there is, if more of us banded together yeah. and, and create a strong project, yeah. 
And then the people who are not of color can see that we can do horror films. Yeah. And like, where's our, where's the black science fiction film? Like, yeah. You know, things like, I want to see that. I want to see that kind of yeah. stuff. I don't want to just see Zoe Saldana in a film. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see like a cast of black folks of all hues and colors yeah. in a futuristic story yeah. that everybody goes, that's a great story. Yeah. Well, you just look at the movie for being a great movie. Like, right. Like, uh, one I will say, even though it was geared towards like the more urban stuff, stuff yeah. like that was Fruitville Salvation. That okay, was like, yeah. that was one that like when I watched it, I sat there in amazement of yeah. like how brilliant it was. And like Michael B. Jordan, like I will say is like, and I hate to typecast him on what we just talking about, but like he is like my favorite African American actor. That's good. Like if I see his name is on the crowd, I'm like I'm seeing that. I'll be that first night I'm seeing that. Yeah. Like, I think he is brilliant and amazing. I think he can, like, I loved when they cast him for the Fantastic Four. Yeah, like, exactly. to me, like, a lot of people was like, oh, well, they got a black guy and stuff like that. I'm like, it's no color. It's right. just a great actor doing a role. Like, But you know, though, people who are comic book fans, they're, they're a whole yeah. other breed, too. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. whole other breed also. Yeah. And that's a whole, and actually we have some black comic stuff coming up. I think it's Luke Cage black or something. So there's yeah, some Luke stuff, Cage there's and some black stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah, they're starting to come up yeah. with some stuff, but that's a whole other world, too. I know yeah. people, I do soap shows and the soaps that they're holding <laughs> there. Everybody, you know, and it's it's a thing. I mean, we're, we're trying to, I think what we're trying to do, people, is we're trying to get, and why showcase on this show, yeah. just showing you black folks from different fields that they're out there, that you're out there, that there are black editors. Yeah. Somebody out there may not even know there was an editor who was black. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a big deal because I yeah. think people, if you see somebody that's like you yeah. on TV or here on the radio or something, that does really change a life. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of my things on the show. And, and for me, I, I, I didn't know there were black editors either. We out here. We're out there. You're doing it. Yeah. You do it. Um, Holly Hansen says, hey, Andretti. Uh, so let's say, what's up, what's up, Holly? <laughs> yeah, they love Free Fail Station the same way. Any movies that I'm watching. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan started out on Soaps. He was on All My Children, and I was, he was Erica Kane's stepson. Yeah. So he was on there, and a lot of black folks watch Soaps. That's all, that's all <laughs> too. Young and the Restless, a lot of black folks watching Young and the Restless. Um, but no, I, I kind of, this show is my thing, my, kind of my homage to saying that we are diverse yeah. in this industry, especially. Yeah. That we do produce, we do direct, yeah. we do, and we do direct diverse projects. Yeah. We can do that. Like, drop the color yeah. and look, look at me for my work. Yeah, yeah. Like that was one of the things. Like when I was in, when I was in college and stuff, was like, uh, you had people that like all they wanted to be was a director, or all they wanted to do was like special effects. Like, like they had the certain things they wanted to do. Yeah. Me, I was like, I was that one. I wanted to learn every single aspect of film, from the PA to the audio guy yeah. to doing the editing, like. To me, I want to learn every single piece of it because I was like, how can I sit up there and be a director if I don't understand what it takes for this grip guy to get the cord over here and do these certain things or for the lighting guy to get the look that I want? Yeah. And to me, I just always felt like I want to learn every single aspect of film because I just love film so much. And I just want to learn how every little thing worked because yeah. to me it was just, uh, I just love film and I just want to learn it all because I just want to be able to do every little aspect that you can with film yeah. and be able to just touch on that's why so many people be so amazed like that i direct direct the photography edit you know i could do it all they'd be yeah. like wow how can you do all that and then like when they see it they like it doesn't lose quality on any department you in and i'm like because you're a lot <laughs> when we do something we don't do it half-assed <laughs> Every lot I've met, we always do it. We go in. You guys, my fans know how I am. I go in. I don't do anything half-assed. And you don't either. That's yeah. the reason why you could do it. Yeah. That's my explanation. Um, I'm smelling food right now. There's, there's food outside. I can smell. I don't know if you can smell it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm hungry too. It's not fair. It's much. I love live television. Okay, so the last thing I, I to ask, we could talk. You have to come back on again another time. Yeah. Just to come back, we'll continue the conversation. Yeah. Because he literally he has like I I, can, I can't even show you. It's like a half page of just like stuff he's done that I just can't even <laughs> get into right now because it's just a lot of time. But I ask my I ask my uh, my uh, my interviewer interviewees the same two questions. I yeah. don't I don't prep them in advance. Yeah. So I'm getting their reactions now as I ask them today. I have no idea what the questions are unless they watch the show at yeah. the end. Um, I'm I'm all about language. All right. So language is very important, and we talked about the, about that a little bit in the show earlier. Yeah. Um, what word do you think, as people or as African Americans or as men, whatever you choose, do you think we should take out of our vocabulary? Oh, that's easy. Uh, fleek. <laughs> 
I hate, I hate that, that word. word. I hate that word. When I see people like, oh, I'm fleek. Oh, this, I'm like, I hate that like... word too. I hate that word <laughs> so much. Um, now, uh, what word do you think we should either say more of or bring back into our vocabulary? Say more of, I would say, um, thank you. Oh, I like that. Even though that's two words, but thank you. Just, that's fine. Just uh, being from the South and stuff like that, just having an appreciation for somebody, like the simplest things, like, you know, uh, like I got a big thing of like, open up the door for somebody, you know, just a simple thank you. That's what I think I should be just, uh, to me, I think that's what should get more of, is just like appreciation for another person. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong saying thanks. <laughs> I mean, there isn't. Like, yeah, yeah, thanks. There's yeah. Nothing, nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with saying it. Yeah. So I totally agree with that. Um, Andre, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And for you having definitely me. have to come back. Yeah. Um, tell people in that camera where they can find you and your cool camera production and all that kind of stuff on. on uh, well, you can find me on all social media platforms from uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat at Andretti Dante. And then uh, if you look up on uh, Facebook, search Cool Camp Productions, you can find it on there. And if you look on YouTube, Vimeo, Vimeo would be under Andretti Dante, but on YouTube, look under Cool Camp Productions. And just one thing I want to say, I just want to say, uh, my boy, uh, it was the day before my birthday. My one of my close friends back home, Brian Elliott Knight. We call him Boo Boo back home. He passed away. Oh, sorry, Today would be his 38th birthday. I just want to say happy birthday, Boo Boo, and birthday. I love you, Gammy. And happy I'm birthday! Good. And yeah. a Tandalin Lot. My says, mom. That's your mom. That's, that's my mom. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> hey cousin Tandalin. Hey, girl. Uh, thank you for awesome Thank you so much for watching us today. Of course, um, I love seeing the last name a lot in my in my in my feed. It makes me it makes me very happy. Yeah. Um, and also, you'll find his stuff on. My Breaking Into page, which is on Facebook. So just go to Breaking Into, subscribe, like it. Uh, we're also on iTunes. We're also on YouTube under Black Hollywood Live. And then go Breaking Into, where all 30 ep- 38 of my episodes are on, number 38, are mm-hmm. on, my, on, the, on there. And you can follow me at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms across the world and across the interwebs and across everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. And take care of each other and protect the village. <laughs>